But there is one other video of his I will go into. This has to do with his 10 part series on relativity, which was in regard to some criticism that Rene made on the subject. This series was followed up by an abridged edition containing additional objections. I won't go through the detail of it since it is outside my area and has nothing to do with the moon landings. But the reason I bring this up is that it shows how sloppy his knowledge is in regard to Rene's work. Like many of his friends, Hunt's knowledge of his opponent's work is fairly limited. The odds are, if it's not on the web, they don't know about it. During the amendum portion of his video, Kyoti displayed an image that he copied from one of my videos, showing a page from one of Renee's books. Based on the fact that the page only mentioned special relativity and not general relativity, Kyoti concluded that Renee never discussed general relativity. In these passages, there are some interesting anomalies. Firstly, Ralph refers to special relativity alone throughout. He does not even refer to gravitational effects. And yet, two pages later is a section titled General Relativity. Now, if you don't mind, I've blurred out the surrounding text because I don't want to give Kyoti more ammunition that he can quote out of context. Although I do plan on discussing this information in a future production in more detail. It's bad enough criticising someone's work without having their material. What makes Kyoti's particularly offensive, though, is that he makes arrogant accusations without any means of confirmation. I'm no fan of my opponents either, but I'll be sure to obtain their material before discussing it. He then goes on to accuse Rene of plagiarising his work from another researcher. This leads to only one conclusion. Obviously, Ralph's understanding of relativity was not thorough. At best, it was crude. At worst, it was that of a simpleton. Also, reading Ralph's critique, I am now confident that Ralph parroted A.G. Kelly. A.G. Kelly runs an anti-relativity website. On this site, you will find a criticism of relativity that mirrors Ralph's criticism exactly. Or should we say, Ralph's criticism mirrors A.G. Kelly's. A.G. Kelly accused Hafner and Keating of rigging their results. What A.G. Kelly did not understand is that the total effect due to gravitational and kinematic time dilation effects were reported in accord with well-bounded statistical techniques for treating instrument error. A.G. Kelly's accusation stems from the fact that he did not understand that Hafner and Keating made assumptions to separate gravitational effects and kinematic effects. Neither A.G. Kelly or Ralph truly understood the Hafler and Keating experiment. In fact, reading this section from Ralph's ramblings, it is obvious that he plagiarised A.G. Kelly and sold it as his original thought. This makes Ralph even more of a troll and a liar than I originally thought. Further, the very fact that Ralph only refers to special relativity throughout his criticism shows that not only did he not understand relativity enough to criticise it, he did not fully understand the criticism he plagiarised. Ralph could not even plagiarise properly. All he had to do was copy and paste. Palming off someone else's thought as your own is a disgusting, despicable and loathsome practice, and even more so when you claim to undermine the mind of a genius in the process. The bottom line? Ralph was a crude mouthpiece a cheap sensationalist and a cultural vandal and now it seems he was a plagiarist and he couldn't even do that right Ralph was scientifically illiterate Einstein was a genius in literacy terms the six-year-old Einstein was chewing up war and peace Ulysses the praise of folly the divine comedy and Sun Tzu's art of war while Ralph was still wondering how a caterpillar could be so hungry after eating all that food well, unless Renee also plagiarised the time machine, then I hardly think these charges are warranted. This is A.G. Kelly's article. It is an internet copy and not dated. But a curious glance shows numerous references to papers from other authors with dates in the late 90s. The latest date is 1998. So we know that the article was written during that year or sometime later. 
Renee's book containing this was originally titled Men's Lectures and was published in 1990, eight years before Kelly's paper. Now, there's also a later copyright for 1998. Is that just for when he retitled the book, or did he add further material? Unfortunately, I've not been able to track down the original manuscript, but according to the introduction of the chapter, it says he conceived his ideas on this subject in November 1987. In other words, 11 years before Kelly. Also, in the bibliography, it shows a reference to Hathlel's 1972 paper, rather than someone's critique of it. There is no evidence that René copied anything from Kelly. René hardly used the internet for anything other than hosting his own website, which someone else managed. So it is unlikely he even knew of Kelly's article. And since Kelly's article contains a far greater level of detail, it's highly unlikely that Kelly copied anything from Renee. All indications are they reached their conclusions independently. Like I said before, I will not tolerate this kind of behaviour from someone who claims to be a physics researcher and university lecturer, and neither should YouTube, his co-workers, students and employers nor should anyone else for that matter.